So cataracts and glaucoma are actually two separate conditions. Um, if we look at this model of the eye, uh, you can see the front of the eye here, and this is the eye to the side. I will take this off and we can see inside the eye. Um, the lens, which is, which is just here, the lens of the eye is what becomes cloudy in, in um, cataract. So it's a, it's a opacification of the lens that is the cataract. Glaucoma is actually a condition of the optic nerve, which is here and takes the information to the brain. So as you can see that they are completely different areas that are affected um, by these conditions. Um, glaucoma is a, a progressive uh, condition that causes loss of nerve fibers and you get a loss of vision that way. Uh, when this loss occurs, uh, we can't bring any vision back. We've just got to stop it getting worse. So we have to uh, try and identify the condition early on and stop it from progressing. With cataracts, however, um, once the cataract occurs, we can do surgery to improve the vision. So we have a treatment um, uh, uh, for for the cataract, where we take out the cataractus lens and replace it with the uh, intraocular lens and artificial lens. So glaucoma is a condition. Glaucoma itself in the Caucasian population in the UK is found in about one in fifty patients over the uh, people over the age of forty, and about one in ten over the age of seventy five. Um, whereas cataracts, cataracts actually develop in everyone over a period of time as the lens grows throughout um, throughout a person's life. And it's quoted as about one in three people over the age of 65 have at least one cataract. So as we can see, um, there will be a significant proportion of patients with um, glaucoma that have cataracts because of the demographic that they both affect. There are several um, different types of glaucoma and I'll, I'll just describe um, two of the most common and then how cataracts affects them. Um, if we go back to the, the model of the eye, so we're back here, um, fluid is produced in, in, this, in this part of the eye called the ciliary body and it flows in front of the lens and through the pupil and then out through this drainage angle in a sieve-like structure called the trabecular meshwork. Um, in most people, their angle is open, and in, uh, in open angle glaucoma, which is the uh, most predominant type of glaucoma in Caucasians in the UK, there is a pathological, uh, um, a micropathology of this trabecular meshwork, this sieve-like structure, which means the fluid does not come out of the eye um, as quickly as with a normal person, and the pressure builds up slowly within the eye. Um, if you develop a cataract uh, in, in open angle glaucoma, you don't really affect, affect the drainage angle at all, um, but the cataract itself uh, so the cataract itself doesn't affect the drainage angle and doesn't affect the glaucoma as such. Um, however, doing surgery um, in the form of cataract surgery in a patient with open angle glaucoma is a little bit more complicated because the pressure can go up during the procedure or after the procedure. So you need a, a specialist who, can, uh, who knows the patient's glaucoma condition and knows how to deal with it during the surgery or afterwards. In, there is another form of um, glaucoma called angle closure glaucoma or primary angle closure, where that drainage angle is actually quite narrow. And if we go back to the, to the model, as the lens grows, as the lens grows with time, it can uh, it becomes bigger and pushes on that drainage angle, so it can close off uh, the angle completely. And the pressure, therefore, there's nowhere for the fluid to drain out of the eye, and the pressure can go up very high very quickly. And this is known as an acute angle closure attack. Now, in these um, patients, having the cataract or a bulky lens is um, a, a factor to their disease. And therefore they require us to take out, take out their cataract or bulky um, natural lens to open up the drainage angle. 
So cataracts are usually treated with cataract surgery, um, uh, where we take out the um, opacified lens as a surgical procedure and then put in an artificial um, intraocular lens. In a glaucoma can be treated in several ways. We can use drops to lower the pressure and these drops work by different mechanisms. They lower the pressure by either um, reducing the production of fluid within the eye or by um, increasing the outflow of the fluid from the eye. We can also do laser treatment on that sieve-like structure known as the trabecular meshwork, which allows for more outflowed fluid and therefore reduction in the pressure. Or we can do uh, different types of surgery to lower the pressure. And these are uh, done so that they can um, that they allow for increased outflow. Um, the most definitive procedures are known as trabeculectomy, where a little flap is formed in the eye and allows for fluid to pass out that way. Or we can use glaucoma drainage devices, aqueous shunts or valves. We also have more minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, where we use micro uh, surgical techniques and um, uh, um, devices to lower the pressure that way. When we do, in certain cases, we can do, when we're doing the cataract surgery, we can use those um, devices at the same time. So the mixed procedures, the micro invasive glaucoma surgery devices can be inserted at the time of cataract surgery to help lower the pressure for the patient. So if you had a glaucoma patient who had mild or moderate glaucoma and require and um, would want to come off some of their drops or required a lowering of pressure, that can be done at the same time as, as the cataract surgery. Cataract surgery can upset glaucoma, and uh, um, that is why we need uh, someone who knows about the patient's glaucoma to carry out the surgery so they can control the um, pressures either during the surgery or after the surgery. And some forms of some patients will have had glaucoma surgery prior to their cataract surgery, which makes the cataract surgery either technically more difficult or um, certain procedures, extra procedures or techniques may need to be carried out during the cataract surgery to preserve the glaucoma surgery. So there's several causes for both um, glaucoma and cataracts. With cataracts, um, they usually occur with increasing age. Uh, they can be associated with conditions like diabetes, um, excessive uh, alcohol uh, use or smoking and obesity can all cause cataracts. Previous eye injuries or surgery can also cause cataracts, um, as can um, previous steroid use. With glaucoma, uh, there are lots of risk factors. Um, glaucoma is uh, more prevalent in um, people over the age of 40. Uh, it's more likely if you have a family history of glaucoma. Ethnicity um, also uh, has an effect on glaucoma. So uh, Afro-Caribbean patients will have, uh, people will have uh, open angle, more likely to have an aggressive form of open angle glaucoma and Southeast Asians more likely to have acute angle closure. Um, high eye pressure is a big risk factor and it's the reason, the reason why we um, talk a lot about that is it's our only modifiable risk factor. So it's the one thing we can treat and do something about. Being short-sighted or long-sighted uh, puts you at risk of glaucoma. Previous eye injuries also um, can cause glaucoma as can the use of long-term steroids. Also thinning of the cornea uh, or thinning of the retinal ganglion cell layer. So the cell layer in the retina or optic nerve fibers can also increase your risk of glaucoma. And as can other medical conditions like diabetes, migraines, high blood pressure, and poor blood circulation. <laughs>